again. So yeah, good morning, lads. Uh, welcome to a, another episode in our Canic series. Uh, this will be episode 27, where we're going to talk about ratio finding. So basically, with all of these canons here, we've been using, I think it was like three ticks separation between the powers, and then three ticks for the hammer with like one rev, like one tick before the power, or one tick before the hammer, sorry. Um, and we're looking to now upgrade from that. So we're going to move on from that um, that ratio, as it's called. I don't know why it's called a ratio. It's just common common practice to call it a ratio. And we're going to hop into sort of how to hunt for a better ratio and how to make one ourselves. So usually most people do these with multi-dispensers uh, where you can actually easily change up... Um, the amounts of TNT that you are dispensing. Uh, so I'll show you guys how to use them in this video, how to look for a ratio, how to time everything out, and what you want to be looking for. So the first things first, the command to get a multi-dispenser is slash alt multi, and then you've got a bunch of parameters that you can use to change timings, priority, which way it's rendered. Um, the only parameter that I really use is um, M. So if you go M, and then snake bite or whatever you want to call that, and then you can do the amount. So we're going to start with 150 for the power. So you can see down the bottom here, I've got slash multi m uh, snake bite 150, and we hit enter, and that will actually give us a multi dispenser. And you can see there we got um, m 150 f 80 w 1 pr 1 u 1. So pretty sure. Oh, there you go. It says underneath what it is. So it's 150 entities, fuse of 80 ticks, weight of one tick, and a priority of one. So what that weight means is basically how long it takes for that dispenser to dispense its items. In this case, where it says one tick, it's actually one game tick. Uh, that kind of doesn't matter, as long as you're using full multi-dispensers, because then the weight is going to be equal for all of them, and then you can just worry about the timings. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna build ourselves a little container because the only thing we're really interested in is finding out how much, um, or we're finding out timings pretty much. We can also find out hammer ratio with this rig as well. Uh, it's a bit more janky. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have two dispensers like this, two powers, and then we'll have our ladder here. We'll have a ladder here, and then here. And then what we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna place in two more dispensers. So. This side here, we're going to make this our first power. So what we can actually do is we can just wire this dispenser up. One, one, and then we'll go... We'll start on three ticks. Um, I'll explain which which timings are good and why um, in a second. But we'll do three ticks, and then you can just like wire everything else pretty much off that. So what we'll do is we'll set up that, um, that ratio that we had before with our... Um, with our 100 stacker and our 10 stacker. So what we're going to do is we have a multi of 150 here. This is our first power. This is our second power. So in our first power, we want our sand to be going off. So we're just going to do 150 sand. Pretty easy. And we're going to put that on... We're going to put that on more delay because your sand always needs to be rendered after your hammer and slab bars. Usually for this this rig we're doing here, um, I don't really give a, give a shit about... Um, uh, anything else except our power timings, our hammer timings, and all that sort of stuff. So we'll have our, another multi. We'll just do 150 again there, and then we can just place this layer of blocks up here. So now we have our sand, which is being rendered after our um, after our hammer. We've got <coughs> got our hammer that actually needs to be four ticks there. So we've got a three tick separation between powers. So power one's going off at one, power two is going off at four and then our hammer's going off at seven. So we want our one rep to be going off at six. So what we can actually do here is if we go multi, multi, say M1, one rev, hence in the name. And now we've got a multi dispenser where we just have one TNT that's going to be dispensed or one entity. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire that across. And now what we want is, um, we want it to be going off one redstone tick before that uh, dispenser there. So this is going off at seven currently, so we want this going off at six. One, two. Now we've got our one red wired up. 
Before we do anything else, what we're going to do is because this dispenser here, this is actually going to be dispensing out sand. This is one of the cool things about multi dispensers, you can actually dispense out sand. Uh, there is a block on um, crystal called uh, block 36. And what that's going to do is that's actually just going to keep everything as an entity. So you'll see that's not a full block there, but that just means t uh, TNT and sand can fall on it. I'm just going to pre fill this uh, sand dispenser here with sand. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go TNT fill. And then we're going to add a Y guarder. And yep, yeah, that'll do. And what we can do now is we can go dumb blocks. Okay. Alright, so we've got this little setup now. We've got a wall. We're just using indestructible blocks for the wall. And what we're also going to do is we're going to place a block above the barrel. So there's sort of three-ish main things that you're really looking for with this. Um, the first I'd say is range. So we'll get a sign. So we've got one range. So range is the big one. Um, basically what that's going to be is going to be the delay on your one rep. Um, and basically... What's going to happen is you're sort of going to look at the one rev in relation to, I think it's the hammer power, is it? Yeah. So you're going to look at your one rev in relation to your hammer power. Um, oops, sorry, I'm just dealing with something right now. Anyway, so basically you're going to be looking, your range is going to depend on the relationship between your, I think it's your one rev and your second power, pretty sure. So in this case, our second power is going off on four and our one rev is going on off on six. So we've got like two redstone ticks or four game ticks worth of range. That's generally how you want it. Um, higher is always better though. So if you have, say, um, if we can like get away with adding a tick on water over and adding a tick to the hammer or something and it'll still it'll still cover the other other two sort of um uh areas then it'll be good so basically after after range the next thing you want to test is if it's going to clip so if we put a solid block above where we're going to stack on this cannon here and say we've got a block like that so you can see it's above barrel height if you don't have a good ratio, what's actually going to happen there is it's not going to stack properly. So the second thing that we're going to test for is clipping. Clipping. There we go. So we've got range clipping and um, I guess the next big thing is going to be delay between your two powers. Generally, a shorter delay is better um, because what you can actually do is... Say, if you are uh, patching against this cannon here, um, if you have like a sort of long delay between your powers, what what some people and what will accidentally happen is, say, you're patching your first wall or something and your first shot hits this wall here. Okay, so this is our sand power. Sand power hits the wall. If we have too short a delay, we might end up with a situation like this where someone patches directly in front before the second power can get in and they're actually going to split up the powers. So you're going to end up in a situation like this, and of course nothing's going to stack because your um your sand and your hammer powers are physically separated. So that's like the second or the final big thing that you want to be testing with your cannon is delay between powers. Okay, so we've sort of got these three little uh, parameters that we want to test now. Um, so we've got, do we have this? Okay, that is still the sand, sweet. Um, what we can do now is we can actually just get a bubble and we can fire this. You can see there, we're stacking one below barrel height. And what we can do now is we'll just add our one shot sand just to make sure we are stacking our one-shot sand as well. Uh, one-shot sand, we'll just have it rendered after the hammer. No big deal for the for the time being. So we're just going to go multi-M1 for our one-shot sand. 
and then we'll just have this wired up and we'll just stagger it probably two out or something that's gonna be a bit messy we'll just stagger it like that and now TNT fill, TNT fill, TNT fill red sand we go slash Tifa do I have a block 36 there? Clearly not. Okay. So yeah, you do need to remember to have that just to keep everything as an entity. And then we'll fire that again. Um, why didn't that work? I'm just going to play around with the hammer ratio. So I think, I think what's happening is it's just um, that one shot sand is actually being shot down into the sand stack. Uh, so we'll just uh, play around with our hammer ratio. I'll get into why why this hammer ratio is so important in a later video when we cover Osabi and swing. Um, but we won't do that for the time being. We'll just yeah, there we go. So yeah, you can see that perfect barrel stack range is so we'll just check uh, check back over these things. So our range is four game ticks or two resto ticks. Uh, because of the separation between our one rev and our hammer. One rev and our hammer? No, one rev and our whatever I said before. I don't even time it off. I don't even remember, to be honest. So one rev one rev and second power, I think. I oh, know. Whatever. Um later one rev better. That's 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 pretty much it. I'm absolutely losing my mind this morning. So we've got decent we would call this decent range. So we've got um for this ratio at least. So what we can do is we're gonna go zero slash three slash five slash six. Those numbers there refer to the um, timing. So you got your first power at the very front, your second power, your one roof, and then your hammer. It doesn't clip, and we've got a three tick delay between powers, which is all right. So that's our first timing there. Now there's a bunch of actually publicly available timings. Um, which we can get into. Um, so that's that's our first one. Of course, all these timings you can just copy straight across onto a cannon. Um, just be aware that some of them are using game ticks to get different offsets. So I believe I'm just going to search. Actually, pretty sure in a couple of the discords, specifically uh, split splits Discord, you can actually find um, good ratios off by heart. So you can you sort of got two two main ways of doing it. Um, so your first your first one is um, uh, you can either ratio find yourself the rig like this where you can start gradually changing each of these timings and adding game ticks or you can just be a lazy fuck and just search for timings. Um, so what we'll actually do is I'm gonna list a couple. Um, so 0356, I used this on a 2.2 second force, I think, um, this ratio here. Uh, it wasn't bad, to be honest. It had quite short range, but I was forcing anyway, so that's okay. Um, so what we'll get into next, this is the main ratio that I'm using. It's actually 0 to, uh, I think it's 6.59. These are all in red uh, So you can see we've actually got a game tick offset on our... Um, on our one roof there. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go zero, five, six, and I'm going to go four GT range, and then we'll go um, unclippable. And then with this one here, that's actually nine game tick range. So you can see we've almost got double the range of that one there. So we go zero to six point five nine. So the separation between two and the 6.5, which is our hammer power and our one roof, is 4.5 resonant ticks, or nine game ticks. Nine GT range, and unclippable. Okay. And I'm just gonna just search for ratio on one of the discords that I have, just to find a third one. Cause I'm, a bit, I'm feeling a bit lazy and I don't wanna I don't want to um, 
search really. But yeah, the the second one there, I think uh, Belgian bomber found that one. That's the one that I normally use. Um, okay, I really really can't be bothered looking anymore. Um, I will just make make a note as well, um, specifically with multi-dispensers here. One thing that you need to be really, really careful of is, um, so you've got your actual setup here with all the timings. One thing you need to be really, really careful of is the amount of hammer that you're using. So in this case here, you can see like we've got 150 hammer to stack like 10 blocks. So we're not going to get a good indication of how much hammer we're using. So on top of the actual timings that you're going to have, you're also going to get a hammer ratio. So we've got 150 hammer there. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to change that hammer down to 20. And then we're going to start working that hammer down. And then what we can, I'll explain in a second what we can actually do from there. But we'll just go with 20 first. Okay, you can see it does work with 20 there. We're just not getting the one, one shot sand just because of swinging. And change it to 15 TNT. Fifteen still works. How many blocks is that? That's twelve sand. We're going to be getting close then. You can't actually, you can't go under um, um, more than one. You can't go under one hammer for sand. That still works with this clipping. Uh, let's go thirteen TNT. Obviously, when you use more TNT, you're going to get a finer ratio. Um, but I have to see. Okay, so the magic number there was 14 in this scenario. So this will be a pretty, pretty uh, rough estimate. But what we'll basically do is we'll, um, we'll go back to 14 and then we'll see how much sand was stacking. So if we go multi M14 and then we go T5. I'm just going to clear my inventory, just get all the shit out. You can see there that we are stacking all the way and we'll just clear that stack. And what we can actually do here is, oh, I didn't actually see how much we stacked. How much is that? Okay, so we stacked from there to, yeah. so that's 11, 11 pieces of sand. And we've got 14 hammer, I think. So this is, this is a really, really rough estimate. And ideally you do want to be doing it from up higher. Um, but this will give you just a general ballpark area of how much hammer you're going to need. What you actually do from here is you can go slash slash calc, which is the calculation command. And what we'll actually do is we'll go um, hammer divided by sand, I think. Yeah, 14 divided by 11. Okay. So we just did our hammer ratio there. You can see down the bottom bottom left, uh, we got 1.27273. Um, what that basically refers to is how much hammer you're going to need to stack one piece of sand. So what we can actually do from here, we have that hammer ratio. Um, so we'll have that for this one. Um, like two, two, seven, two, seven. But why that's nice to know is what we can actually do is we can go slash slash calc. And now we can multiply however much sand we need to stack. Um, by that ratio there. So if we want to say make a 256 stacker, we go 256 uh, multiplied by 1.2727, which is our hammer ratio, and then we get 325.8112. Does, decimals doesn't matter, always just round up and then round up to your nearest uh, swing ratio. So what we actually have here is in order to stack 256 sand, we need 325 hammer. So generally I'd say anything below 1.3 is a good, good ratio. Um, ideally the lower the better and um, what we can actually do with this one do we bother setting that up um, no nah, we won't I'll just tell it because I've, I've used this ratio so much um, what I'm actually gonna do is I'll just tell you the <laughs> tell you the number I think it's approximately 1.17 I think I was using two 300 hammer for a 256 stack or something on my hammerless so we'll go calc um, 300 divided by 256 1.17, yeah, okay. So, 
basically, if you want to say make a 384 stacker with a ratio of 1.17, what you can do is go slash calc 384 multiplied by 1.17 and yeah, 449. So you'll round that up to 450 and then uh, keep, keep going up until you find a nice swing ratio. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, basically, if you do want to find your own ratios, you do need to play around with a rig like this. Um, of course, you can game tick this. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, for red cent tick, uh, you need that for red cent tick repeater uh, when you are game ticking things. But of course, you can game tick these dispensers with those little um, game ticking things. You can test slab bust and nuking and all sorts of shit with this. I can't really test web bus nuking with it um, because you do need that certain wiring setup. Um, but for the most part, this is this is how you find a new hammer ratio. So I think in the next video, um, I kind of just don't really want to do that 100 stacker anymore. So we might just move on to a 256 stacker. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this ratio instead. So I'll show you how we can actually wire that up in the next video um, uh, with that game ticked one roof. And apart from that, yeah, that pretty much sums it up for this video. Uh, so enjoy the rest of your weekend, wherever you are, and I'll see you again.